starting your own caregiver service business, part two. Probably the most frequently asked question we hear is how much money I can make working as a self-employed or private duty caregiver. This is a loaded question because how much you can make will involve a number of things. Having said this, there are several factors that will determine how successful you will be as a business owner, and most of these do not involve money. First off, we should point out that many people who want to start their own caregiver business already have years of experience as caregivers. They also have contacts in the industry and generally know many other caregivers and healthcare workers. So, what we are saying is that these people have somewhat of a head start, but having a leg up does not necessarily equate to being successful in business. As example, many athletes, while great on the football, basketball, or baseball field, have not necessarily been equally great in the front office. So do not doubt yourself for lack of experience or a small caregiver network. That is, what you may lack in experience or contacts you can make up for in personal drive, determination, and perseverance. It will be these intangible qualities that will better determine how successful you are in the long run. Okay, but how much can I make? There are really two different scenarios that come up when we get down to the nitty gritty of how much you can make in your business from the standpoint of the two types of people that we have touched on, experienced versus newer caregivers. An experienced caregiver with several contacts and a good reputation in the industry, in theory, has an initial better footing due to these factors and may very well get off to a quicker start than a less experienced caregiver with fewer contacts. For our brief discussion, we will call our more experienced care provider Caregiver A and our less experienced care provider Caregiver B. Okay, let us say that Caregiver A's greater experience, contacts, and reputation provide them with the initial boost in spreading the word about their new business venture. As with most businesses, word of mouth advertising carries a lot of weight in terms of how quickly others will learn about your caregiver business. As a result, this might mean Caregiver A starts to acquire clients more quickly and generate revenue faster than Caregiver B. However, this does not necessarily mean that Caregiver B cannot equal or even surpass Caregiver A at some point. With hard work and determination, you should be able to recruit several clients in a relatively short amount of time and build up enough revenue to provide full-time work. But this depends on how much effort you're willing to put into your business and get yourself out there. Having said this, if you happen to be Caregiver B, you should not concern yourself about trying to keep up with Caregiver A. Rather, focus your energies on starting off your business the way you need to. You cannot worry about what someone else is doing. If you do, you will spend a lot of counterproductive time concerning yourself about something that you cannot control, and less time on what you need to be doing, like obtaining your caregiver, CPR, and first aid certifications. The point is, if you adhere to your priorities, the clients and revenue will come. This brings us to action step four, decide how much you should charge. Truth be told, one of the best equalizers in the industry is how much you can charge for your caregiver services. And here, less or more experience as a caregiver really doesn't matter so much. That is, Caregiver B can charge as much for their caregiver services as Caregiver A does. Now, while you can charge whatever you want for your services, we recommend the following as a starting point. Monday through Friday, look to charge $15 to $20 per hour for a two-hour minimum. On the weekends, consider charging $20 to $30 per hour for a two-hour minimum. Currently, these are roughly the going rates for self-employed or private duty caregivers, but rates can and do vary across the U.S. depending on location and a host of other factors. Remember, your time is valuable, so don't undercut yourself. The key is to be competitive, but not overpriced or underpriced. Finally, as you work through some of these thoughts and decisions, keep in mind that what we are suggesting is not written in stone. It is a guide, as this entire video training series is a guide. There will inevitably be differentiation across the board regarding rates, circumstances, and a whole host of variables that you may or may not be able to control for as you begin your journey as an entrepreneur. Just remember to maintain an awareness about what is most important to you in your life and go after it with unwavering commitment. Now, if you have not done so already, please do review part one of this video training series and move forward with your action steps. This video emphasized taking action on how much you should charge for your services. Consider that, but not for too long, as you need to get moving. Stay tuned for part three of this training series on starting your own caregiver service business, as we dive into action step five and the types of services you will consider providing.